Today we're going to go over a couple of things that I do on these Camaro clips to make them a little bit better. This clip is now 50 years old. Uh, all these clips are now 50 years old. If you're getting one, a donor clip that's been on a street car, even if it's been fielded for the last 10 years, it's still got a lot of miles on it. There's lots of time there that it could have gotten curbed. Um, there's a lot of things that could have gotten bent on it. And just to, to ensure that it's straight, um, I go through a few steps. Uh, you know, I want to give myself the, the best chance that I can. And having a clip, putting a clip in that isn't 100% correct, uh, there's really no benefit to it. So going through these extra steps to make sure that it's right um, will help not only your on-track performance, but you'll know when you're putting it together, um, when you're doing setup, that it's just correct. You also have measurements that you can go back to so that you can check to see if it had gotten damaged in a wreck on track. So the first thing I start with are these alignment holes. This rod should go all the way through front and back to ensure that your, that your holes are aligned. Um, what will happen is this thing might hit a curb or it may be involved in an incident and this mount can be tweaked and these holes will not be aligned. Well, once those holes are aligned, that A-arm doesn't move freely anymore, so it's got bind to it. Um, you're not allowed to move these anywhere that we run, but what I can do is I can clean those up, I can hone them, I can put them in a straight line, and then I'll go back and weld a washer over it to reinforce it. Now, I don't just use any old half-inch washer. A regular half-inch washer, when you push it, when you put it onto a bolt, it's got slop to it. To keep that from happening, I actually use 7 16 USS hardened flat washers. It says 7 16 right there, but I marked it out and I wrote half over it because this goes in my bolt bin. And I, this is what I use for a half-inch. Even though it's a 7 16 when you put it over your bolt, it's got very, very little slop. There is a little bit of slop there. You're never going to get all that out. Uh, but as opposed to that one, it's just a lot better fit. And by reinforcing these, uh, we're, we ensure that later on down the road through an impact, they're not going to get egged out or bent. Um, it's just stronger and it gives you a nice clean surface, uh, you know, a flat surface to, to, to run your bolt through. Um, it's just a lot nicer. So our first step is to go ahead and hone these holes. <clears throat> When you first put this rod in, it does hit the frame just a little bit right there. So what I'm gonna do is mark that, flip this clip over, and relieve that spot so that I know that this doesn't hit and I can get my holes aligned correctly. On the left front, you can see that it actually slides through. It does not touch the frame. It's very, very close there, but it actually makes it through. But look what happens when I align it to this backside. That's as close as I can get. I'm even kind of pushing on it up there at that point, and I cannot get it to align. It's about a third of a hole off. If you were to go ahead and put that A-arm in there and put those bolts, knowing that they're at different angles, they're not aligned properly, that A-arm is going to have bind, and it will limit the travel. Now that i got the clip flipped over, um, I'm ready to go ahead and heat those up, get them red, tap them in a little bit, just so that I know I can get my, my rod through there. Uh, without it binding and you know changing my alignment there So I'm gonna knock that out real quick and uh, then we can move forward to putting those washers on Now that we've got that recess and you can see a small gap, I will go over that and grind it up just to clean it up so it doesn't look all hammered. Um, but now you can see we're, we're centered up in there. Look how far off we are on this back one. That's exactly what I'm talking about right there. This is tight enough on these holes that it should be able to, you know, it's centered up. And look, I'm wiggling it around. That's how far. We're literally a half a hole off 
on that side right there. Step two. Now we got to align these holes. Without doing too much grinding to the front one, I can do a little bit of grinding to the back side of this front one and then also both sides of that, that rear mount. What this is going to do, it's going to allow me to get this rod to go straight through on one level plane. So after a quick cleanup of the holes with my deburring die grinder, I've got it through there, through there, it goes nice through that one, but now look how far off it is on that back hole. Again, it's a half a hole off. This is the big one here. This is the one that we're going to need to do quite a bit of cutting. These other ones we were able to get aligned by doing just a little bit of work on the front, just by opening them up a little bit. Knowing that we're going to weld our washer to it, we could open those up a little. We're not moving the pivot hole. We're just opening it up so that we can get them aligned. This is the big one. If this one's off by a ways, we've got to cut that out because there's no more amount of... I mean, we'd have to open this one quite a ways to get it to get into there. Um, ultimately we're going to take quite a bit out of this back one maybe a little bit out of that front one to get it aligned but when we weld the washers on that's where it's going to get all of its support back now that you can see our rod goes all the way through and all four holes are in a perfect line now we need to go through and add our tight tolerance washers. We will have to go through and do some grinding on here, get that all cleaned up. And also on some of these, we may need to trim them down uh, where the clip overlaps or where this, this lower pocket is, just to ensure that they sit flush and flat against the, uh, the actual clip itself. So I got to do a little bit of grinding here, do, get my washers prepped, and uh, next step is start welding these babies in place so that we can ensure we have no slop and a perfectly in line lower air. Here is my alignment rod. It is a piece of half inch uh, 065, just round half inch OD. I did have to put it in my in my drill and I sanded it quite a bit so that I knew that it would slide in on these. It is fairly tight, so you got to be careful. Um, if they if if you don't sand it down enough, it'll get wedged in there and it's kind of a pain to get it out. But uh, just a piece of half inch OD. Um, what actually works really really well is some half inch all thread. Um, it is actually just fractionally smaller than what the OD would be on this tube and it's really nice to get in there and get straight Whatever it takes to align that straight is what you need to do without having to hog out your uh, your washers This back side I did have to do some trimming on because of that pocket on that on the clip itself There we go. Now we're ready to weld those in. Perfect alignment. We've now got the four washers tacked in place. We're ready to weld them in. Uh, before I do that, I want to pull this bar out. As you can see, it's gotten a couple of weld berries on it now. I need to pull that bar out because by the time I'm done, it's going to be so weld buried up that I will never be able to get it out of the clip. So um, you can see how nice it spins. It's all perfectly in line. Um, that's, that's perfect. We're ready to weld it up and uh and move on to the next step
that I've got everything welded up, I went ahead and I re-cleaned my rod up. I put it in a drill and I just spin it while I'm using uh, some 80 grit sandpaper to polish it. I took all the welding berries off. But now you can see how it's tight, but all of our, all of our holes are now in a perfect line. Um, they're welded up on three sides. I don't see the need in welding it all the way around. Uh, this way, if it gets damaged, you can just cut those three welds off and replace that rather than have to try to cut that whole damn weld off there. But uh, yeah, there it is right there. That's how it's supposed to be. Now we get to do the other side. Again, here we are when we put our rod in. Um, it doesn't quite align. It's closer on this side. So that tells me that that right front probably had some damage at some time. They may have slid over and impacted a curb, which caused those to be misaligned. This one is pretty close. It does need a little bit of grinding um, on the back side of this one and also on the back side of the front of the rear strut mount. But um, uh, this one's actually pretty close. So I'm going to go ahead and whittle this out and uh, we'll be ready to weld those on here pretty quick too. And there we go. All of our lower pivots are perfect. We don't have any worries about them not being in the right spot or not being aligned. Um, these are going to feel a little bit stiff by the time you get it all finished. That's common. Um, the main thing is that they are perfectly aligned. Now that we have the clip flipped over and uh, we're ready to start working on the top of it, I have this template that I've made that I use to mark out where my side is cut out so that I have access to the spring uh, and the adjustable spring pocket. I also cut some of these little pieces of material off here that don't need to be there. Um, and finally, the last thing I do on the upper A plate is I make this cut. I cut this gap out of the center here and I hammer this over. To do this, I'll have to slice out a pie on this side so that I can lay this over and, uh, and basically gain about three eighths of an inch of camber. We have to run the stock AR mount in its stock location, but because we have a camber rule, we can uh, move this over, tighten this gap up, and give ourselves a little bit more camber and meet the camber rule, but still use the stock plate in its stock mount. Now you can see where the cuts were made to relieve that so that I can move it over. There will be a slight angle to it now that it will be moved over, but I'm still gaining quite a bit on, on that uh, by removing that section of that upper. Um, there's not a lot of ways you can go about getting these Camaros where they have the correct camber on the left front, get that tire stood up enough. Um, you could cut the whole mount off, but that's actually far more illegal than what we're doing here. They do allow us to gain some, but they ask that we use the stock mount in the stock location. It's still a stock location. It's just that the plate has been altered just a little bit to get us that little bit of camber, and we're still within our camber, uh, our camber rules. So um, this is an easy way to do it. What we'll do it next is we'll heat it up along the base here with the torch, get it nice and hot, pull this over, weld the top up, and uh, and we'll be good to go.
We've got the A-arm squared up so we know that they're going to pivot correctly. We've got our A-arm mount thinned up so that we get a little bit more left front camber. We've got our spring pockets cut out for access to the spring and the spring adjuster. Uh, now we just need to sandblast this baby and start installing. There you have it. That's all it takes to prep one of these clips to go on your hobby stock or your street stock. Just remember, a chassis is just a host for parts. And that's why it's so important for a chassis to be correct. Because if your parts are in there incorrectly or they're not working at their maximum efficiency, uh, it's just not going to be right and it's going to be harder to work with, to work on, and, and to find speed ultimately. So take your time, get those little things right, and uh, good luck down the road. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, um, share so your friends can see it, and uh, yeah, good luck.